Okay, this is going to be Gathering Proof, recording number three, and part three of The Jews. Uh, the picture I'm going to put up on this recording is an actual picture of a nebula at outer space, in outer space, which is called the Eye of God. And it only looks like that when viewed from the Earth through the Hubble telescope. It's called the Eye of God, and it is not doctored. I've seen many different pictures of it from many different uh telescopes it's proof of God but then people would say okay it could be photoshopped it depends on your basis of belief your your uh, belief base or foundation I totally believe it because the Holy Spirit proves to me shows me that it's true there's proof everywhere that we want to look the Bible even says that proof of God, and this is paraphrased, pr proof of God can be found everywhere in the things that God has created so that anyone who looks at these things and cannot see God, the hand of God and the love of God is without excuse. Next time you have Levi or Toby on your lap or sitting next to you, I want you to take some time to just look at them and look at the hairs, the perfect design, the little holes around the upper mouth where the whiskers come out, the line of holes, the little tiny short hairs on the nose that get a little bit longer as as you go up towards the bridge of the nose and up onto the forehead and then the hairs get longer towards the back of the head and the body and look at the way that the the direction in which those hairs are growing look at the cat's eyes how he's got two different eyelids on each eye look at his iris how it is a vertical slit it's designed to help him in night vision. You know that evolution is bunk. You know there can only be one other explanation for the beauty of Toby or Levi or Molly or any created being. The Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You've seen those documentaries on the human body where they take you inside the veins and the arteries, inside the cells. You've seen the marvel of creation there. And God would say, you are much more without excuse than those who have preceded you in previous generations because you have television. You have these wonderful scientific shows that prove the hand of God. So you are much more without excuse than previous generations. And God says in his word, to whom much is given, much is required. You have less of an excuse to disbelieve. And I'm not saying that in any judgmental way. I'm just saying it because I know that for whatever reason your eyes have been blinded but I am determined that with the leading of the Holy Spirit as he leads me to speak to you and as he leads you as you listen your eyes will be opened they have been closed for a reason but they will be opened God has promised me that and I proclaim it as a prophecy in Jesus' name. Whether they are open before the rapture or after the rapture, I don't know. But they will be opened. And you will be a wonderful man of God. Very energized and very fervent. Very fervent. It could be just one little 
straw that is added to the camel's back of your faith that will crack open a wealth of understanding and belief in Christ. Sorry to mix metaphors there, but there's one tiny, tiny little little straw that's going to be added that will break the camel's back of your disbelief and or your unbelief. Disbelief is different to unbelief. Unbelief is just you have not believed yet. Disbelief is like where you refuse to believe. Okay, I've got some future proof concerning the Jews. The land of Israel will be divided, according to the Bible, as a result of a peace deal in which there will be a proviso that the land will be divided and part will be given to the Palestinians. That has to be part of the seven-year peace plan that is drawn up and later confirmed by the Antichrist himself, who I believe will be either Greek, more likely probably Turkish. Greek or Turkish is going to rise from some one of those areas there, I believe. I don't know. Nobody knows. He won't be revealed until after the rapture. But he will rise from nowhere. He will not be elected. And when he rises, according to the scriptural um, prophecies and the pictures of the prophecies, he will rise as part of the beast system as a little horn. And as he rises, he will displace three larger horns. And I believe those three larger horns happen to be, I can't, I can't say for, for, for sure, but the more information I gather, the more I watch, the more I believe that as the as the Antichrist, who is the leader of the beast system, which will impose upon you the mark of the beast that I want you to refuse, as he rises, he will displace three other horns, and the horns represent leaders or powers. I believe those powers will be communism, the United Nations, and the European Union. And the European Union is floundering at the moment. It is a mess. So it can't be, I think if the European Union is one of those horns, large horns that he's going to displace, with his kingdom, which he'll be possessed by Satan halfway through the, the tribulation, then the little horn will set up the beast power and he'll be the leader of it. And Macron in France at the moment has just, just last week, uh, or the week before, on Bastille Day, in the March of Bastille Day, um, he's just put together ten nations or ten heads and they are the ten crowns of the beast they are the ten toes of the continuation of the roman the holy roman empire but there will be some toes that will be made of according to nebuchadnezzar's dream or daniel's dream um some toes will be made of iron they'll be strong and others will be made of clay they'll be weak but there'll be ten toes or ten nations or ten heads, leaders. So there's two different um, visions there to explain those ten leaders. So that's the beast power that you're going to be under if you remain after the rapture. And you're going to be ruled by it. And they're going to track you down. And they're going to know if you've taken the mark of the beast or not. And if you haven't, they will take you into captivity, put you in a FEMA camp and behead you. I'm sorry to say. Now, I'm fighting against that. I'm fighting so that you won't have to do that. So the seven-year peace plan will soon be implemented after, and after the rapture or about the time of the rapture. And the... Once we see the land divided, I believe there's, I, I can't say for sure, but I believe that there is going to be an earthquake, a huge earthquake in America, if America is the one that implements or instigates this plan, which it looks like Trump is at the moment. And this might be the plan that is confirmed by the Antichrist halfway through. Oh, no, no, confirmed um, by the Antichrist and then broken halfway through. Um. 
and the splitting of the land is what make, will make God very upset and angry with America or whoever instigates it. A remnant of the Jews will flee to a place called Petra in Jordan. Um, read Revelation to, to see that. It doesn't name Petra in Jordan, but it says that they will flee to a rock or the mountains and find uh, safety there for three and a half years, which is half of the tribulation. So Petra is not specifically named, um, but that will be at the installation of the abomination of desolation, which is a, a vile thing that's going to be erected in the newly built temple or the holy place where the Jews will be once again a sacrificing uh, animals f to cover their sins because they're not covered by the blood of Jesus yet. So they will be um, once again giving offerings, um, uh, blood offerings, and they're ready to go to build the temple. It's just got to be the right um, situations have got to arise before they can go in to the Temple Mount and build it uh, on the site of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is owned by the Muslims, where they want to build that, that was their original temple, which was destroyed in 70 AD on the 9th of Av, which is a Jewish day, which has always been a bad luck day. 9th of Av, and I'll get to that later. So the Jews will be sheltered there in Petra or some place like that for three and a half years. Um, and angels will feed them or they'll be taken care of in the last half of the tribulation. And the Jews are told when they see the abomination of desolation rising in the holy or sitting in the holy place, which is worship to demons, to, to Satan. It's going to be some sort of image of abomination, vileness and satanic garbage that will be standing in the holy place and they have to flee and they will. They will know because by then they'll be reading the book of Revelation, I guess. Well, God will speak to them because they'll get saved. I'm not exactly sure how that will happen, but they will know to flee. And they are to told to pray, sorry, not to told, they are told to pray that it won't be in the winter or on the Sabbath. So obviously they will be praying, so therefore it will not be in the winter and it will not be the Sabbath because God answers prayer. Israel and its people will be somewhat decimated, actually greatly decimated, but it will survive. Jerusalem will be protected by God. It will not be destroyed. Uh, um, seven years after the rapture, uh, Jesus' feet will touch down on the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. So it's not going to be destroyed. And then once Jesus comes back at the end of the tribulation, seven years, he comes back with us. We're riding on horses and we fight and defeat the evil ones, the beast power, with the word of uh, the sword of his word. Jesus will defeat the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the world governing beast system and throw them all into the pit for a thousand years at the end of which they will be released, I guess, to draw out all the evil that still might exist on the earth at the end of the thousand years of peace, that might exist in the hearts and minds of men. Uh, there will be a thousand years of peace at the end of the tribulation, so that's coming within six, seven, sorry, seven, eight, nine years maximum, I would say. At the end of that tribulation period, Christ will usher in his kingdom, and he will rule and reign, and we will rule and reign under him for a thousand years of peace. There will be people born, they will die, uh, some will get saved. Um, and there, at the end of that, Satan will be released to draw out the sinful seed. And then comes the judgment day, the great white throne judgment of Christ at the end of the thousand years. So then all those people who die in the tribulation, who die outside of Christ. Um, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit hazy on that. Um, all those who die during the tribulation I will be raised at the end of the thousand years of peace. Um, their souls will go to different places like hell or to heaven, I guess, um, or to the New Jerusalem. I'm not sure. But 
then comes the judgment, the great white throne judgment. Every single knee will bow. Every single person will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is, is God, the Savior. And every eye will see him as he comes back at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Um, now, God warns us Christians through his signs. He lets us know, the Christians who are watching and waiting, the bride, he lets us know what is going on by the signs in the heaven. In the beginning, he, he created the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth, of course, and he put the sun and the moon and the stars to be for lights, but also to be for signs. The Revelation 12 sign of the virgin uh, giving birth to the, the boy child, the man child, with the 12 stars in her hair and the moon at her feet, that is a sign that um, Israel is the child and there's this, the constellation of the serpent um, which is waiting there to consume the child. That was in the, on the 23rd of September 2017. So we know that that is a sign. Now any sign you see, like a road sign, it means that not right now but coming soon you're going to have to turn left or right or go over the overpass or under it whatever um a sign is for near future so the revelation 12 sign was on the 23rd of september 2017 which means that that is soon coming true and it's a sign that the rapture is very close on the 21st of August 2017, I was here in America at the time of the eclipse, the great eclipse that went over America. That heralds something magnanimous, usually catastrophic for the place that it goes over. And the eclipse went right over the heartland of America. And now our breadbasket is dead, almost dead. Uh, the crops have been killed by the floods and everything. That was a two-year warning, a sign of coming catastrophe for America. There's another one coming in 2024. Oh, sorry, 2014. Um, excuse me, I'm really tired. 2024. And that will cross over the first eclipse, which is 2017. So that's seven years later. God's holy number, God's seal number is seven. He's perfect number. So the second eclipse over America will cross it at a certain point, I can't remember the name of the point that it crosses now, but there will be something significant happening, happening there at that point. So that's 2024. 20, Blood moons are also a sign in the heavens that God gives us. On the 16th and 17th of July 2019, a lot of people thought that that would be the rapture because that was a blood moon. It was an actual super blood moon over Israel at midnight. Now, if it happens over a certain country, it means it pertains to that certain country. The blood moon over Israel on the 16th and 17th of July, which was actually the date uh, projected for the unveiling of the political portion of the peace plan. Um, and a lot of people thought the rapture would occur then. But I see these as signs of soon coming things, not actual days of, of coming things. You don't have a sign and then you, then you turn left at the sign. You Well, usually not. You have a sign and then you've got a few hundred meters or whatever before you have to turn. That's um, talking uh, driving-wise. So blood moons usually herald catastrophes and war. They are blood color for a reason. Uh, now Trump was born on a blood moon born during a blood moon that's very significant and the bible codes are amazing because they reveal everybody's name everybody's name is in the bible you just got to look for it and find it the way you find it is um with equidistant letter um, um els equi uh, sequencing equidistant letter sequencing so you could count, say, from the first letter of Genesis um, in the Hebrew, by the way, 
and go forward a hundred letters and find the second letter and go forward another hundred letters and find the third letter and then go forward another hundred letters and you find the fourth. So that's equidistant letter sequencing. And the Bible codes are infall infallible. Uh, Obama's name is there, um, everything about him, everything about Hillary Clinton, um, Bill Clinton, and they're all closely um, situated in the Bible codes. But you have to, you have to um, go into the Jewish and you have to understand um, Hebrew to be able to do it. But I've seen that the Bible codes are infallible. People are still looking for the rapture dates, but they haven't been able to find it yet, I don't think. Um, here's some interesting proof. A Trump assumed office on the day that he was 70 years, seven months and seven days old. That is seven, seven, seven. So he's not the beast of Revelation. He's not the 666 Antichrist, I wouldn't think. Because the Antichrist just rises out of nowhere. He is not elected. He just assumes power. Also, there's a hint in the words, the last trump, which is um, written in Revelation about Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, um, the, the rapture, no man knoweth the day or the hour. That means that, see, at, at the time of the Feast of Trumpets, they blow trumpets, but they don't even know why, <laughs> really why they blow trumpets. It's about the rapture, I believe. And a lot of people believe that the rapture will take place um, on Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets, uh, which is in September, usually late September, sometime in October. And the Bible says, at the last trump, and that's referring to the rapture, that Jesus will come. Now, we know that we are to listen for a trumpet blast. We hear a trumpet blast blown by an angel, I guess, or Jesus, and then we hear Jesus say, come up here. They are the three words that I love the most. A lot of people say that the, the three most important words in the world are I love you, and I agree with that. But the three words I love the most are come up here. I am aching to hear those words. Come up here. And what will make us rise will be the Holy Spirit within us. Those who are Christians, but calling themselves Christians, but are lukewarm uh, that means they are not listening, they're not close to the Holy Spirit, they, they are offending the Holy Spirit with their sins and not repenting. They are the once saved, always saved people. They will not be raptured because the Holy Spirit is not alive and hot and fervent within them. Only those of us within who have the Holy Spirit within us that is really alive, we've got to be on fire for God and full of the oil of the Holy Spirit. We will be the five wise virgins who will be taken, according to the parable that Jesus gave. The five foolish virgins who were waiting for Jesus, the bridegroom, to appear. They fell asleep and they got lazy. They were the lukewarm ones who Jesus will spit out of his mouth. Um, so then also, uh, September 17th is election day. Interesting that Trump does not have a Knesset. Very, very interesting. I don't know how that's going to happen, but it's interesting that he's just boldly said, I'm, gonna, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I don't have a Knesset, so, so what? It's almost like a king. Now, the 9th of Av I referred to before, um, it's a Jewish disaster day. The Jewish temple was destroyed in 70 AD as Jesus predicted. He said that the, the, the temple would be destroyed. And he was right, on the 9th of Av. Now, the 9th of Av is looming. It's next week, which will be August the 11th on our Gregorian calendar. And many think that August 11th slash 9th of Av is Rapture Day because it will be a bad day for the Jews because they are... They are the reason for the tribulation, for God to bring them out of that saved. Bring a remnant out of that saved. They wouldn't turn to God if it wasn't for the tri tribulation. And many Gentiles, Christian Gentiles, of the, the, the Christian, um, the tribulation Christian Jews, um, Jews, sorry, the tribulation saints will not come 
to God without something really radically um, catastrophic like the rapture day. It's not just going to be a day where uh, millions, I don't think it's going to be billions, it's going to be only millions, maybe um, 333 million is my guess. When all those Christians disappear, that is not just going to be a day of vanishment. It's going to be a day of earthquakes and upheavals and many will die in the um, aftermath of it. So I'm praying for angels to protect all those who can come to Christ. Keep them alive so that they can repent and come to Christ. And even if they have to be beheaded for their faith. A few weeks ago, God told me in my sleep, God is sending his angels. And I perceive that they are here now. They are ready for the catastrophic events that will happen before and during and after the rapture. I don't know when the rapture is. I just know it's close. So here endeth my third part of um, gathering truth or gather, gathering proof on the Jews. I hope this has helped you in some way. I'll close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that the words of this, though uttered very clumsily uh, because I'm tired, I pray that the words of these recordings will touch Alan in a way that you have designed for this particular time and for anyone else who happens to be listening. I'm not making this private or unlisted. I'm just leaving it out there in the public because I believe the rapture is soon and if anybody can be blessed by it, then that's great. God bless everyone who does hear this and lead them to all truth in Jesus' mighty name. Let them never be deceived. Amen.